Okay, so uh, we're going to start. Uh, we do this monthly, but this month we're doing Irish and Irish American authors because there is so much to choose from and so many wonderful authors that we want to introduce you to in case you don't know who they are. So uh, I guess we'll go to the next slide. Okay, uh, this is an interesting little fact that Irish literature is very old, it's the oldest in Europe after Greece and Rome. And if you read the slide, you can see more information. But the thing is, in this presentation, we're really not going back into the past very much. We're not talking about uh, Singh and um, O'KC on uh, the Oscar Wilde. We're not going to be talking about those authors. We're talking about more contemporary authors. So just keep that in mind that there's this rich tradition continues today, but we're really concentrating on contemporary Irish authors and Irish American authors. Okay. Um, this is, <laughs> if you, this really strikes the chord with me, uh, being Irish had an abiding sense of tragedy, which did sustain him through temporary periods of joy. And I know people who have that philosophy in life. And William Butler Gates, who is the greatest poet of the 20th century, um, there's a picture of his grave. And Brian had had the uh, good fortune to go visit uh, Gates country in, in Ireland and look at his simple stone with a simple epitaph on it, which he wrote himself. So we're going to use him as a jumping off point to discuss some of our favorites. Uh, John Boyne is one of my absolute favorite authors, Irish or no. Uh, he was born in Dublin in 1971. He's written children's books and mostly adult books. He's best known probably for The Boy in the Straight Pajamas, which was his real breakthrough hit. I There's also a sequel that just came out uh, that takes place years later, but with the same characters. I have so many. I could not pick a favorite of all of these. They're all different. But what I like about John Boyne is he really gets to people's hearts and he's so insightful. And his books are suffused with melancholy, but not in a depressing way, more in a, a way that makes you really know these characters. And I just think he is a genius. So I would recommend any of these books. I just want to mention The Absolutist, the one on the top of the list, I remember very well because it takes place during World War I and uh, it was wonderful. And the other books are just as good. So please read them if you haven't. You'll, you won't be sorry. Okay, next we have somebody who's pretty well known, Tana French. Um, as it says here, she was born in Vermont in 1973, but she's lived in Dublin forever. So she can be called the first lady of Irish crime. I've enjoyed her novels in the Dublin Murder Squad. There are six of them. And you don't necessarily need to read them in order because each book focuses on a different member of the Dublin Murder Squad. So that makes it kind of fun. And you could really mix it up. You don't need to read them in order. The two other books on here, The Searcher and The Witch Elm, are standalones. And that's what she's been writing most recently. Um, so really, uh, I would also recommend her. She's just terrific. Edna O'Brien, one of the greatest writers alive. She's a she's still alive. She was born in 1930 in Ireland. She's a novelist, short story writer, memoirist, playwright, and poet. Uh, the first book mentioned, and you see the cover there, is The Country Girls. This was written in 1961, and she, there were two follow-ups to it. But they're, it's considered a trilogy. Now, what's amazing about Edna O'Brien is that she was the first woman writer who focused on Irish women and their misery in life. A lot of times they were very repressed. She talked about things that no one talked about before. It was a big secret because Ireland was such a repressed country. Um, her books were banned, some of them. But she was the first one who really looked at women in Ireland and portrayed them very frankly. And for that reason, um, she is in a class by herself. So um, try one of her books. We're ordering a copy of The Country Girls. We didn't have it. 
So um, I hope everyone will read it and get a better understanding of Irish life and Irish women. Adrian McKinty, I know that's a very brooding picture of him. He's a very interesting guy. He was born in 1968 in Belfast. He came to the United States um, and he uh, became a U.S. citizen. He's a dual U.S. Irish citizen. He presently lives in Australia. Um, he did a trilogy called the Belfast Trilogy, uh, which was about an Irish Catholic cop in Northern Ireland, which was very unusual to have a Catholic Irish, Northern Irish cop. He's uh, named Sean Duffy. And in the three books of the series, he is in the height of the tr of the troubles in Northern Ireland and the grim reality that they live in, the constant sirens, the bombs going off, the checking under your car to see if there's a bomb. It just makes it so real. And I just really enjoy his writing. Uh, the Island in the Chain, the two books mentioned on the top, The Chain takes place in the United States. It was a big hit for a while. It was about a kidnapping. There's a chain of events with a kidnapping, like you, your child is kidnapped, you kidnap someone else's. And it was a big, uh, very big bestseller. The Island takes place in Australia, and it's a very interesting story, very harrowing. Um, and since he lives in Australia, I guess we, we might see more books about that. But he is truly a, an, an international author, um, as well as being an Irish author. We have Sebastian Barry, uh, born in Dublin in 1955, poet, playwright, and novelist. Sebastian Barry, I read a, uh, an article about him uh, in The Atlantic, and it said, uh, you should be reading Sebastian Barry, proclaims Adam Begley in the most recent issue of The Atlantic. They were, it was in reference to his new book coming out, which I have a picture of, Old God's Time. Um, he is, has a special understanding of the human heart. And he, being a poet, he uses language so beautifully. I'm sorry to say I've never read anything by him, but I'm certainly going to start. I think he's a treat that a lot of us don't, aren't aware of. Emma Donahue is probably one of the better known authors we're talking about today. She was born in 1969 in Dublin. She's been living in Canada for a while. Her first breakout book was Room, which I think became a movie too. I just love her books because they're all different. She writes on all time periods of history. Uh, the Wonder has is going to be made into a movie soon. It's about uh, a young girl who um, people think she's uh, some kind of a miracle from God because she doesn't ever eat and she's still alive. So a young English nurse is sent out to check out and see if this is a fraud or if it's really happening. Pull the Stars takes place during World War I in Ireland. They're all different. The one I just, her most recent book is Haven which takes place, I think, in the fourth century uh, with three Irish monks going out to find a monastery. And they find this very um, foreboding rock, which is not very conducive to life, but that's where they decide to build their monastery. I think she's just a terrific author. And I marvel at her imagination. Uh, Column Toybane, uh, born in 1955 in County Wexford, Ireland. He is a very well-rounded person, novelist, short story writer, journalist, playwright, and poet. You see, the first book on the list is Brooklyn, which I think is probably his most famous book. Uh, it was also a movie. I just love the way he describes the an Irish immigrant experience in, in New York. I love the characters of Brooklyn. Um, I also read Nora Webster, which I enjoyed. It was the story of a young, uh, well, I guess um, an Irish mother whose husband dies and she's left as a widow with all these children. And it talks about her existence and what her life is like. Uh, he's talked about the master, I think it's about Henry James, and the magician, I think it's about Thomas Mann. So he, again, you know, the, the range of his imagination is just astonishing. So if you haven't read, you start with Brooklyn. It's a pretty easy read, but it's it's a very good book, uh, very evocative of the time period. Right. Next we have John Vanville, born in County Wexford in 1945. He wrote 
kind of more literary books under his own name. But then he started writing a series of mysteries called the Cork Mysteries about a coroner in Ireland during the 1950s called Jamie Kirk. He was writing those under the name of Benjamin Black, but for some reason now he's writing them under his own name. So April in Spain is a Jamie Cork book, uh, but written as John Banville. I love his mysteries and he's such a literary writer. He, his use of language is, is just amazing. I think that's what a lot of these authors have in common is their use of language is just so poetic. Um, I do like, his, I haven't read all of his books, and, but I have enjoyed the ones I've read. So if you haven't read anything by Jan, John Banfield or Benjamin Black, you could give that a try. Liz Nugent, um, she's a little bit of a, a lighter fare. She was born in Dublin in 1967. She's written four, well, she's written more books, but these are the four that are published in the United States. Uh, she does psychological suspense, and I really enjoyed her books. Uh, Unraveling Oliver was very creative, very interesting topic. Nothing is what it seems to be. So if you're looking, if you like uh, people like Ruth Ware or um, Gillian Flynn, I think you'd like Liz Nugent. I recommend her for if you're in the mood for a page turner. She's good. Patty Doyle, born in Dublin, 1958, playwright, screenwriter, novelist, short story writer. His first book was The Commitments, which was made into a movie about a, a, a group of Dublin friends who form a band. And uh, it's a it's actually even when I was in Ireland, I saw they had made a musical out of it uh, for their uh, stage. Patty Clark, Ha Ha Ha, was another uh, big, big book for him. The book that I have on the cover of is Love, which I really liked because it was a kind of like a book about nothing, but it was two characters sitting in a bar. They hadn't seen each other, two old friends, and they're just talking over a bunch of pints of beer. And um, the phrase for the profundity of the mundane occurred to me, or maybe was brought up in the book because nothing happens but it, there's so much heart and there's so much in, intuition in the book because you really get to know these people as they reveal themselves because uh, to each other and I, I just love him I think he's great life without children is his newest and that's short stories and some of them take place during the pandemic so that's a good one to read if you want to get a little taste of him um all right next we have Emer McBride. Now, I she was born in Liverpool in 1976, but her parents moved back to uh, Ireland when she was three. So she grew up there. She currently lives in London. She is probably the most challenging author uh, on this in this webinar. Her first book was A Girl's a Half-Formed Thing. And here's an interesting thing. It took her six months to write the book and nine years to get it published. Because I can imagine if you've ever read any James Joyce, uh, for example, uh, the only one I've read besides Dubliners is Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, where it just seems like it's words, there's no punctuation. And when you're reading it, you you get a picture forming, but you you it's it's a very different way to read if you're used to a, 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 na a traditional narrative. Uh, so that's why I, we, I would say she's a Joycean novelist, very heavily influenced, stream of consciousness. However, I think if you listen to it, it might be a better experience because it's disconcerting to see words with no punctuation. You're not sure where a sentence ends, where one begins. Um, but she is, I think she has, an, this is an amazing accomplishment, how she gets a story across just by using like a word salad. So if you're in the mood for a challenge or kind of experimental fiction, Emer McBride is for you. Maybe not for me, but for you. <laughs> okay. Sally Rooney, born, she's very young, the youngest one on this list. She was born in County Mayo, Ireland in 1991. She writes poems, novels, and essays. She still lives in Ireland. These are her three big books. She was... Um, See, the first one was Conversations with Friends, then Normal People, and then the last one, Beautiful World, Where Are You? Uh, 
I like her books. I like her characters. I think she writes really well. Even though they're about 20-somethings, I still found that I was getting a lot out of her books. If you haven't read a Sally Rooney book, you might want to start. Um, I think she's got a big future ahead of her because I think she knows the human heart uh, very well. And uh, I just like the way she writes. Okay, William Trevor. Now, he's one of the, I think, the only one that, that is no longer alive. Uh, he's born in 1928, County Cork, Ireland, and he died in 2016. He's primarily known as a short story writer. There are many, many collected William Trevor stories, and they're very enjoyable. The, the book that I like, I, I read Felicia's Journey and the Story of Lucy Ball, and I really like both of them very much. Uh, Felicia's journey is a little bit eerie in a sense because the character, the main character is a very strange guy and you fear for Felicia during her journey. But I think, again, he has a lot of insight into human behavior and, uh, and that really is showcased in his stories. So he's still in print, so read him while you can. Colum McCann, uh, born in Dublin in 1965. He now lives in New York. He, he came to New York in 1986 to be a fiction writer. And he just traveled all over the country. He lived in New Mexico. He lived with the Amish. He lived everywhere. And uh, his first book was Let the Great World Spin, which was a pretty big hit for a while. Um, that took place in New York in 1974. And it talked about different characters who live there. And all the while, the backdrop is, uh, if anyone remembers, Philip Petit, who uh, walked a tightrope between the two twin towers. And that's the backdrop of the book. Uh, he is really terrific. Um, Transatlantic, I read. I didn't read the last one. I don't even know how to say it. But, uh, again, he's someone that you should read. I think people would find him very enjoyable, but he, okay, yeah. All right, Michelle Gallen. No, that's okay, we're done with McCann. Michelle Gallen uh, is someone who's probably very unknown. She was very coy about her age, but she's from Northern Ireland, like Adrian McGinty, and she grew up, she was born in the mid-1970s. She was there for all the, the, the horrible years of the Troubles. She's written two books, one last year called Big Girl, Small Town, and factory girls. And again, she talks about women in living in Northern Ireland and what their lives are like. And it's a very grim picture, but she has a lot of humor in her books. And there's something very life affirming that her characters in Big Girl, Small Town, um, the uh, main character is a very overweight woman who works in a fish and chip shop. And when she describes all the goings on in the restaurant, and uh, it's very humorous. And Factory Girls is, they're girls, they're about to go to college, but they took summer jobs in this factory sewing shirts. And uh, there's a, some politics come in and uh, some of the naivety of the young women and working there, um, they lose that sense of uh, innocence. So I really liked her. That's why I put her on, even though she's only got two books. So we have both the books in the library. So uh, if you're interested in reading about Northern Ireland young women, uh, she really nails it. Oh, good. I had to. I had to get in here Come back for Claire for Keegan. Claire Keegan. <laughs> this writer is so good. I figured out how to unmute myself so I could talk about it. <laughs> I wasn't prepared yes. to say that, but but now that I'm here. Um, the New York Times said she harnesses the power in brevity. These books uh, foster, by the way, before I left the library today at two o'clock or a little bit after two, this book was on display in the window. So as soon as we're done here, the library is open till six. Whoever really wants to read a good book, run down and get that book. Yeah. Um, or, you know, you could download it for free from uh, Hoopla, has all of her books. Um, 
and you can log in with your library card and read it online. But her books are very short, but they pack. It's it's as if you read um, a much longer book. That there, there's so much um, meaning and and so much um, evoked in, in in such a short book, um, and that's what the times meant with that. And most of them take place in rural Ireland, although uh, Walk the Blue Fields and Antarctica are both books of short stories. And I believe a few of them take place in the States. But they almost, those ones almost feel like they're out of place. Um, those stories, I felt, that's the way I felt at least. Um, mm. But it could have also been because I read um all of her irish stuff first foster has just recently been made into a film which uh if you really want to go out of your way you could um you could go down to the angelica in manhattan and and check it out part of it is in irish language um with subtitles of course um but uh I think she's just, I mean, I recommend her books to every single person that walks in the library that says, I don't know what to read. Uh, I I read small things like these, and I came in and said to Nancy, I said, this book's made me rethink my whole life. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, uh, that's like the thing that we really want at the library. You give someone a book recommendation, they say, oh, this transformed my life. Mm -hmm. Um, but but uh i don't want to oversell it but but i think that uh for our times when people have short attention spans and a lot going on you can really get a lot out of her short uh great books yeah i just want to mention there's a short story in antarctica which i i cannot get out of my mind as soon as i finished all the book the, all the stories in the book. I went back and read it again, and I just can't. I think about it. I mean, she has such a power to hook you in. Um, really, is that the one I had mentioned to you? Yes, a patron uh, had also. Uh, yeah, said that. a patron came in and said the the same thing to us that that this story had really stuck in our head. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're not going to give any spoilers, but uh, certainly we highly recommend. Claire Keegan. Oh, and now Irish American authors. This this image is an image that I um, uh, took from a museum in the west of Ireland called the Great Blasket Heritage Center. And I be- believe the skyline there is New York. But the, of course, the hills here and the water are the west of Ireland. And so what they're kind of getting out is that whole um uh as they say diaspora of the irish all over the world alice mcdermott um probably her most notable book is charming billy and nancy and i were talking Mm -hmm. at a time and i said if i had to come up with a short list of sad books this would (laughs) definitely be on that short list uh, a great little book, but but a certain uh, sadness to this story of Billy. Um, I believe much of it takes place at his wake. Um, also, I'll, I'll have information later, but uh, for the Chapters Book Club in March, we meet on Zoom on the 14th. We're going to be discussing our latest book, The Ninth Hour. Um, anything else you want to say about McDermott? I think she's just a beautiful writer the way she... Oh, yeah. I mean, she spins these tales of people that they're so real and you just ache in your own heart for them. It's just, she's just amazing. She's such a moving writer. Um, and it's like very prosaic people, but they're such... There's her books that just permeated with a sense of sadness. So uh, I I think you get a, such a great experience from reading one of her books. Mary Beth Keene, I think uh, 
lives in Pearl River, born in the Bronx, 1979, has three books out, and a fourth, The Half Moon, will be coming in May. Um, the Walking People is her first book, and it's actually the only book, one of her books, I haven't read The Half Moon yet, um, but that takes place, the first part of it takes place in Ireland, and then the second part takes place in New York. So it's a great kind of, um, you know, you get that that move from one side of the ocean to the other. Um, and talking before, and we were saying, well, all, all three of our books are all very different in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. You have that immigration experience in The Walking People. Um, but Fever is the story of Typhoid Mary. It's really historical fiction. Um, and then Ask Again, Yes, is kind of contemporary um, Irish-American fiction. And um, I think someone said it's, it's like Romeo and Juliet if they had lived and then had to deal with the consequences <laughs> sort of a thing. It, it, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, but uh, I think it's a pretty good, they live, there's this little town that they're in and, and it kind of feels like Pearl River um, mm. to me. Um, maybe that's just because I know she lives in Pearl River, but there's certain aspects of it that I do feel are very um, Rockland. I said perhaps Rockland's greatest living writer, but there are a lot of writers in yeah. Rockland County. We so want to like them. He's in the discussion, <laughs> let's say, of the great Rockland County writers. She's our pride, though, because of how well she's done with her books. We're very proud of her. And, of course, during the pandemic, she was one of the first uh, people that uh, we had reached out to, and she did a, a kind of a QA. and a one of our first Zoom programs too. So, oh, uh, maybe I just have this one a little bit out of order somehow. But because uh, we have a few more nonfiction books to discuss. Yeah. But our upcoming programs, I mentioned The Ninth Hour, uh, Alice McDermott um, on Zoom, the Chapters Book Club. I'll be leading that. Um, on March 14th. So you can sign up on the library website or call us and we'll sign you up. And uh, the upcoming What's New and What We're Reading, April, we're going to be talking books about books. And May, we're going to do, I'm going to do baseball books with Joe Barbieri. I think pitchers and catchers have already <laughs> reported. Uh, and so we snuck that one in, but we still have a few nonfiction books. All of these images, I went to Ireland in 2005 and 2006 with the um, Lehman College has a Center for Irish American Studies. And I went um, 2005, 2006. So we're going to do a few nonfiction. Um, Patrick Radden Keefe, I mean, Nancy and I recommend this all the time. We can't say enough. Patrick Redden Keefe is like our, uh, the master, one of the masters of narrative nonfiction. It's a, it's a nonfiction book, but it's really um, a great investigative journalism. Um, and if you want to know about the troubles um, that they talk about in Northern Ireland, um, I... I don't think there's a better book to start with. Um, very immensely readable. This book was so good that I read, uh, I, I loved the acknowledgments at the end of it, mm. the way he wrote them. It was, it was just, it was a great book. A anything else you want to say about that, Nancy? I, I remember when I finished it, I didn't want it to end, so I read the index <laughs> because I... I just, I read this book every year around this time because I was just blown away by it. It, it just was such an un, unforgettable experience. I love, love, love this book. 
I rarely buy books because I, I work at the no, library. I can borrow them. But I bought this book. Me too. So, and I yeah. never buy books. <laughs> and another nonfiction one. Um, last year, I was playing around in my yard. And uh, I had all these branches I was picking up. And I scratched my eye. with, And I couldn't read. So I I listened to a uh, part of this as an audio book and the author reads it. Um, the New York Times called it uh, one of their 10 best books of last year. And um, it's part memoir, so it's part his story, and it's part a history of modern Ireland. So if you want modern uh, Irish history, you want kind of a primer on it, but something that's not dull. Um, O'Toole does a pretty good job with this book. Um, and if you do audiobooks, uh, you can download it from Hoopla and listen to it. Oh, it's pretty much it. And that first image that we had on the first screen, that was Ben Balbin, and you can kind of see it behind here. And of course, we have this is uh, the churchyard where Yeats was buried. Uh, that's the church. And then um, this is Yeats's under Ben Balbin. Under bare Ben Balbin's head in Drumcliff churchyard, Yeats is laid. An ancestor was rector there long years ago. A church stands near. There's the church. By the road, an ancient cross. There's the cross. No marble, no conventional phrase on limestone quarried near the spot. By his command, these words are cut. Cast a cold eye on life, on death, horsemen pass by. So he wrote his own epitaph. And um, I think thinking about Irish literature or Irish American literature, a great um, Irish novel has a certain beautiful sadness mm -hmm. to it. There, there's a sadness there, but there's something beautiful about it. And, and I, a really great one has hope with it too. And some <laughs> of them have no hope. Some of them, especially the ones maybe on the countryside, but, but even the ones there, there, there is a certain hopefulness in it as well. Um, or there can be. I think if it's good, mm -hmm. um, it just doesn't leave you sad. It, it gives you something to grasp on to. And a lot of times there's such humor in them too. And the characters yes. can laugh at themselves. Or just the descriptions mm. are so funny. So it's a very rewarding experience. There's the sadness, there's the humor, and then there's that kind of emotional tug you get with the book mm. that you really mm. feel for these characters. And, I think these authors that we talked about are all wonderful examples of that kind of writing. Well, I'm, at, I'm glad I was able to actually get on here and talk a little. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Especially about Patrick. Uh, Keith. Well, you can always reach out to us at the library. We'd love to talk about books with you. Mm -hmm. And I hope you enjoyed this. Yes, thank you so much. Have a good weekend.